Shalom, shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. First of all, all praises, glory and honour goes to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Baha Racha Kodash. Double honour to the elder apostles of the Great Millstone, aka GMS. Peace, blessings and citations to the Akim pushing this gospel, this 100% truth throughout the four corners of the earth. Adwan Ratazah, which means Lord willing. So Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. And man, you know, this has to be the final generation. Honestly, this has to be the last generation. Because this is madness, right? These are the things that we have to put up with in captivity. All right? These are the people we have to be amongst, all right? That we interact with day to day in our outgoings, all right? On a day to day basis, man. All right? At work and things like that. <laughs> so, as you can see from this article from AOL.com, recent article dated March the 13th, 2024, the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble at 8 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> it says nearly 30%, which is a third, almost, almost a third, right, of Generation Z women identify as alphabet community Gallup survey finds. See that? It says the percentage of the L word, the G word, the B word, the T word and the Q word adults in the US continues to increase, reaching an all time high of 7.6% in 2023. And that was just last year. Okay. And the reason, you know, I'm not saying those words in the article is because I don't want this video to be cut. Okay. You know what these devils are like. All right. So it's broken down by gender. The survey of 12,000 people, 18 and older across the country found that women were nearly twice as likely as men to identify as alphabet community. You see that? Almost 30% of Generation Z women identify as alphabet, most as the B word. Jeffrey Jones, a senior editor at Gallup, told NBC News. That's where a lot of the growth seems to be happening. Okay. All right. So I'll just pick out certain bits from this because it's quite a, a fairly lengthy article. All right, it's mainly just percentages of of this, all right? But you see, this, this type of behavior is heavily pushed onto the so-called black, Hispanic and Native American community, which are the Israelites, okay? And that's, you know, a wicked agenda of these devils, E, all right? The so-called W-H-I-T-E, man, all right? Okay. But it says 30%, but I'm pretty sure, you know, the numbers are higher. Because this devil, you know, his statistics ain't always right. Okay. So this is the filth and poison that Esau has spread, man. Okay. And our people and the whole world has sipped this poison, man. This Babylonian wine, right? This devil's false philosophies and and, and his doctrine, right? His pseudoscience and things like that. Okay. His democracy. That's why these nations are mad as well, man. Okay. Even... You know, heathen women that come from different cultures, right? different heathen nations, when they come to America, man, they, they, they become Babylonian, they become Americanized, they drop, you know, their, their customs, their, you know, their sense of morality, and then they completely turn out, you know, turn out to be, you know, whore, all right? They, they take on that American whorish ways, you see? That's why America has to go, man, Okay. You see? And this devil through his policy and his media, especially in, you know, his fil the films and TV shows, you know, E, you know, pushes that homo and that lesbo, you know, uh, vibration, that character, you know, he pushes that. And you have all these, you know, different les leses and homes, uh, actors and actresses in these shows, all right? And putting them in like a in like a good light. Okay. And we know that women are the weaker vessel according to the scriptures, so they take these things in, man. Okay. This is why the scripture says that, you know, America is spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Alright. We'll get that real quick. So you can see, man, there's nothing new under the sun. History repeats itself. Okay. Go to Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8, the phone's moving a bit slow. 
Okay, and it reads, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. All right, that's talking spiritually dead because, you know, <clears throat> you know, we didn't know who we were at a certain point in time. Okay, all right. But the Lord, you know, woke us, woke us up through the spirit. All right, Ezekiel talks about, you know, the dry bones. All right. And that great city is America, okay, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, right, meaning X'd out, you know, that uh, white image of, you know, Jesus Christ was pushed forth, all right, as the, you know, the image of, of the Lord and Saviour, which we know he was a so-called black man from the tribe of Judah, all right, and his name is Yahweh Shai, meaning he is a saviour or the deliverer of the nation of Israel. Okay, Yahushua Hamashiach, Hamashiach the Anointed. Okay, so yeah, we know why it's, <laughs> it's Sodom. Okay, Sodom and Gomorrah, All right? And you know, the five cities they got destroyed for that. Okay, and it's likened unto Egypt because of the bondage. All right, Egypt, you know. Meaning bondage. Okay. So yeah, the, you know, the, these women, you know, they like to say, you know, it's it's my body, my choice. Okay, it's that do as thou will spirit. All right. If we go back to the article, see if we can get some more, more on this. All right. This is the first year Gallup has laid out its annual alphabet identification report in a way that breaks down each generation by gender. Looking at all generations, 8.5% of women and 4.7% of men are identified as alphabet. The survey found the survey reported margins of sampling error of plus or minus 4 percentage points among alphabet respondents. Passing each generation, the gender story gets more interesting. In the three younger generations, survey surveyed generation z millennials and generation x women are more likely than men to identify as alphabet however in the two oldest generations baby boomers and the silent generation it is reversed gender breakdown does not account for non-binary respondents who represented about one percent of those surveys you know and in our parents and grandparents generation man these it, back in you know 60s and 50, 50s, these things were looked down upon. You kind of had to hide. You had to, you know, hide that. Now, they're declaring us in the Sodom. You see? So you can see the moral decadence, all right, of this society. All right? So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much that, really. Okay. See, we're vexed with this, man. Okay, we're coming in that spirit of Lot, which Lot represents the nation of Israel. Beginning with the elect, man, because they're signing crying for all the abominations that's been, that's been done in the midst thereof, man. Okay. Sick of seeing these things, man. Wicked and vile behavior. Straight away, we'll go to the point. Second Peter, chapter 2, verse 7, and deliver just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation. Of the wicked. I will go to verse 5. And spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Right, Noah represented the elect at that time, man. Okay. Because only eight people were saved. All right, during the time of Noah. All right, Noah, his wife, their, his sons and their wives. You know. So on. Okay. And that was, you know, the first flood. Oh, sorry, the, 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 the first death was the flood. And the second death will be a flood of fire, you see. And the physical ark, all right, was back then. So, of course, the spiritual ark, all right, is being prepared now, man. Okay, that's why repentance is key, all right. Verse 6, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that should live ungodly. That's right, man. Sodom and Gomorrah is an example of how not to live. Okay. But, you know, these heathens, man, they, 
they're, 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 they're in that beastly nature, man. Okay? Without the law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible, man, you, you, it's like you're, a brute, you're basically a brute beast, you see? Because the law, statutes, and commandments is the life. All right? Verse 7, and delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Yeah, man. And it's not just going into, you know, a regular conversation, all right? Even though the conversations that in these times, man, it's just folly, all right? But really, that's going into the conduct, the behavior, all right? The manner of life, which the Greek word is anastrophe, all right? And what are these people into? Sodomy, you know? Backside, anal, intercourse, which is death. You can get diseases from that, okay? That's what's pushed and promoted, especially in Babylon the Great, man. You got a lot of that over in the UK too. You see? Verse 8, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. And if you're not vexed to what's going on, man, you're not in the right spirit. You're not in the right spirit whatsoever. See? You know, not a lot of these men are, of course, G-A-Y. A lot of these women are lesbos and <laughs> don't forget the Transformers, man. All right? Plus, most of them are, are bi. No wonder, you know, sexually transmitted diseases spread so quickly. Okay? All right? In 2012 was when Obama, Barack Obama was in office and he pushed that G-A-Y agenda heavy. All right. In each generation, <laughs> it's getting worse, man. Acts chapter 2 verse 40. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. So, right, man, this, this, <laughs> this generation... <sighs> yeah, man, they're, they're not into, into righteousness. They don't want to hear the, the words of the Bible, okay? They don't want to hearken to the, unto the Lord's men, his prophets, okay? They want to do their own thing, you know, follow after the ways of this world, all right, and do what's pleasing in their sight, okay? This is the right one. Matthew chapter 16 verse 4. Wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign given unto, unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas, and he left them and departed. All right. But, hey, this is a wicked and adulterous generation. No doubt about it. And you can see it in everyday life. Okay. <laughs> All right. People are just rebellious. Okay. All right, they're, they're into all manner of of corruption, and and it's just getting worse and worse. All right, and really, this is a damn shame, man. This is the type of world that we live in. All right, you know that we have to raise children in, man. It's, you know, part of America's philosophies. You know, her witchcraft. All right, we know the scriptures talks about. You know, that homo uh, lifestyle. Which is in the law. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman. Meaning if a man has sexual relations with another man. All right. Both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Plain and simple. But, you know, this devil, of course, he's adverse to that. All right? <laughs> he's pushing laws for that type of behavior. All right? Glorifying that behavior. Allowing it. Okay? <laughs> but, like, you know, they like to say, oh, we live in a, we, you know, this is a Christian country. Far from it. All right? Okay. Even though Christianity is not the right way, all right, 
you're still not holding up to biblical standards and values. All right. See, and we know E, man, he's the worst of the worst. Worse than any other people group on this earth, man. All right. This devil took the most high's rainbow, right, and corrupted it. And put and made that his logo or their logo for, for the alphabet community. All right. He corrupted the people. He corrupted the minds. All right. He's destroyed the world. That's another thing. That's it. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 14, verse 5. He that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good? Right? He shall not take pleasure in his goods. Right? This devil, man, he'll, he'll make himself suffer. He'll make everyone else suffer, and he'll suffer as well. All right? Here it is. He's corrupting all these, corrupting up the food, corrupting right, the air we breathe. All right? Here it is, it is destroying everything, everyone around him, all right? But he, he, he himself is being caught up in that, all right? So he's not good to anyone, not even to himself. You see? You know? And all this makeup, man, these women wear, you know, to brighten up their countenance, man, and their appearance is, is dark, you know, due to the wickedness that they've done as well, man. You know, all that eyeshadow and, and and mascara and all that, man, to cover it up. All right, got them comb brothers as well. You see, let's get Syrac chapter 30, 35, and verse 3. It says. To depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the Lord, and to forsake unrighteousness is a propitiation. You see? You see, we mentally and spiritually depart, you know, from this world, man, from evil. That's what the Lord loves. Okay? We don't want to get caught up and, you know, <clears throat> be involved, you know, in the uh, in the wickedness that this world pushes. Okay, because that leads to death and destruction. Simple as that. Okay. This devil put, has put the, the woman on the pedestal, man. He's pushed feminism heavy on the woman, especially the so-called black woman. All right. And now they want all the attention. All right. They get all sorts of rights from this. Okay. People in the alphabet community, man, they get top positions. They, they have a sense of security from it, which that won't last forever. And really, this is a death star, man. It's unnatural. All right, for a woman to lay with a, a woman. It's unnatural for a man to lay with a man. It's vile and it's confusion. That's why we need Yahweh Bashim al Shai to set things right, man, and to do away with this wickedness like this. You see? Let's get the definition of the word propitiation. All right. It's spelled again. Cool. Bear with me. There we go. Define propitiation. The action of propitiating or appeasing the God, spirit, or person. Let's see this. To satisfy the wrath of God against sin. To turn away God's wrath or to offer a sacrifice that appeases God's judgment and a righteous anger against us or our sin. Alright. See ya? Okay. And to avoid, you know, the, the wrath of the law, man. Repentance and keeping the law, statutes and commandments to the best of our ability. Alright. That's going to get us in the good graces of Yahweh Bashim al man. Okay. Get one last scripture and we can close out. It's the book of John. 
St. John, chapter 4, verse 23. Right, and this is this is all in red, so we know who spoke this, Yahweh Shai. Okay. But that hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Okay. You see, and that's what the elect are doing, man. Okay. Because these people, they may identify as a particular religion, but they're hypocrites, man. All right, they just do that for it's a, it's a cover up, you know. You got a lot of Christians who are gay, Christians who are lesbos, okay. Mm. Oh, sorry about that. You know, you got a lot of <laughs> hypocrisy going on. You see, okay. Verse twenty four. Yeah, <clears throat> God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth, man. All right. So, you know, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. And with that, I'm going to say shalom to the elect.